Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn more about overfitting. Previously, we saw that we could overfit on synthetic data. 10th order polynomials, they're the worst. They cause you problems. And this should explain conceptually what overfitting is. This video is meant to understand that overfitting is a real problem. It's not some made up example that I constructed to show you how much I can break things. We're gonna do this on a real data set, doing something that seems reasonable, and we're gonna get overfitting. So we're gonna start with our standard num imports, import numpy as np, as np, import pyplot as plt, and that should be from matplotlib. And we're gonna import panda bears as PD. We also are gonna need to read in our data. So we do pd.read CSV, titanic.csv. And we're gonna store that in a data frame named titanic. Make sure that the Titanic CSV file is in your folder if it's not already. Same folder as this notebook. All right. So now let's get started. Before, what we did to see if we were overfitting was we tested it out on so we generated some new data and we tested it out. Now, as is the case with most real world situations, we can't just get more data for the Titanic uh, data sets. And here, even if we could, it would be extremely unethical to build another Titanic and kill hundreds of people by crashing it into an iceberg. But yeah, so we, we can't do what we did before. So what can we do instead? What we're going to do instead is we're going to hold out a fraction of the data. We're going to randomly select 20% of the data and not do anything with that and only use it for testing purposes. So in order to do this, we use a function called train test split. Train test split is in sklearn.model selection. So we do from sklearn.model selection, import train test split. Let's give a random seating. Because train test split, what it's going to do is it's going to divide up the data randomly into two parts. So that's why we're randomly seeding here. And so we have train and test. This is going to be a tuple of data frames. It's going to be assigned to train test split Titanic. And we should test, we should specify how much is going to be used for testing. So we do that with test size. We set test size equal to 0.3. So this way we're going to have 30% of the data for testing and the other 70% for training. What did I do wrong? Ah, SK learn with one. Okay, so what we can see is that train and shape are both going to be uh, NumPy data frames, or sorry, pandas data frames, and they're all going to have both going to have eight columns, 620 rows, or about 70% are going to be in train, and the other 30%, 267, are going to be in test. We got two data frames. And what we're going to want to do with this data frame is we are going to pre-process both of these data frames so that we can do the analysis. We're going to do the stuff that we did from before where we, you know, we change the sex from male and female to zero and ones. We drop the name and things like that. Since we're going to do this twice, we need to, um, we should write a function. That way we can just use the function. We're going to need the pre-processing module. Now we're going to make a function called depth prep Titanic data. 
function of data. And if you're modifying a data frame inside of a function, you need to create a copy. So we're going to say df is equal to data.copy. And now we're going to change male female to one zero. And we do that with the preprocessing thing. So we say L is equal to preprocessing dot label encoder. DF sex is equal to LE dot fit transform. DF sex. And we also want to drop the name. Drop name. Specify that name is a column, not a row, but axis is equal to one. And last, we need to split into X and Y. So to do that, we will say X is equal to DF dot drop survived. Axis equal one. And why this is just going to be the thing we're trying to predict. This is just going to be the survived. And we have to specify a return. We want to return both of these. So we're going to return X and Y. So now we're going to apply this function to both of the data frames. So we're going to say X train Y train is equal to prep Titanic data train. But we're also going to apply this to test. Exact same code, but we just change all of the trains to tests. So now using this function, we have pre-processed both of the data sets. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to train a decision tree on the training set and see how well it does on the test set. The number one rule of training and testing is you don't train on the test set. You want to have an honest assessment of how good is your model at data you haven't seen before. So what you need to do is you need to keep the test data clean. And this way you do all your training on the training data, but you use the you keep the test data clean. So that way, when you test it out, you see if you've actually done a good job or if you've just memorized some examples. So we're going to use a decision tree classifier. So we're going to say from SKI learn import tree. T is equal to tree dot decision. The decision tree classifier. Sorry, I forgot how to spell for a second. And here we're going to set the maximum depth of the tree to be equal to three. We're going to fit it on the training set. And we're going to look at the score on both the training set and the test set. Don't press enter yet. Before we press enter, let's see what we think is going to happen. So in the last video, we saw we were getting able to get like right around 80% accuracy. That was with a two, with a two step decision tree. So I'm guessing that our score on the training set, on the training set, deeper trees are usually good. So I'm guessing maybe something that's a little bit better than 80. Now the test set, this is where we can confidently predict it's going to go down. And the question is by how much? If we did not overfit, it should only go down by a little. You'll recall in the linear regression model we did, it went down from 95 to like 88 or something like that. So it went from very good to still pretty good. And that's when you're, that's when you're doing it right. So let's see how this works. All right, 83% accuracy, a little bit better than 80. 
basically what we'd expect. And we saw that when we tested it on the test set, it did get a little bit worse, but not too much. It did not go down very much, so we are not overfitting. All right. So now let's try this exact same thing, but with a way deeper thing. Way deeper trick. Let's make a tree that's like 20 layers long. Okay, so on the test set, the, the, the powerful tree is like the super squiggly polynomial of order 10. And on the test set, it's darn near perfect, 99%. But it does not, this improvement is not transferred to the test set. And the test set is what we actually care about. It's not as extreme as with the 10th degree polynomials. Those really were me coming up with something that was just gonna be God, gosh darn awful. But it is still worse. Using too complex of a model is not good. So let's flesh this idea out in a little bit more detail. And I've gone ahead and I've written some of this code for you because it's a lot of typing. So we're going to set NB30, which is going to be our largest max depth. And we're going to keep an array of scores on the training and the testing, which are both going to have length 30. And our depths are going to go from 1 to 31. And now for each value of D into range 130, I think that should be range 131. We'll come back to this. I'm just gonna press enter to make sure I didn't break it. Okay, good. No peaking. Yes, yeah, so it should be one to 31. We're gonna make a tree with the max depth equal to that value between one and 31. And then we're gonna fit our model on the training data, not on the testing data. We're gonna take the training score and the testing score. And now we're gonna create an axis where we're gonna plot on a single figure it's gonna be a big figure, you'll see why. We're gonna take a scattering plot of the depth versus the training scores. We'll keep these to be black and label these training and do the same thing with testing scores and make them red. We're gonna make the X label be complexity, the Y label be performance. And I went ahead and preset the Y limits to be between 73% and 100% because I know that that works well. And we also gave ourselves a legend. So here's our code. Now let's scroll down and see what it looks like. So what we can see is that here's our training data. Adding more and more complexity always gets better and better and better on the training data. But we don't care about the training data or that's not, what, that's not, our, that's not how we assess ourselves. We assess ourselves by how we do on the testing data. And what we can see is that for our testing data, we want our level of complexity to be not too big, not too small. The Goldilocks zone appears to be right here. I say one, two, three, four, five, six. And we really can't be entirely confident about this because there is some randomness in the training and testing procedure, but we do have a, like now a reasonable assessment of where we should be going. All right, so that's it for this video. Next time, what we're going to do is we're going to further explore the optimal way for finding the best possible depth. Here's our preliminary analysis. We think it's somewhere between like five, six, or seven, but we're going to come up with a systematic way for dealing with this next time. Have a good one.